So I was writing some code for the new Lego Mindstorms Spike Hub. That's, uh, that's this guy here. And one difference between this one and the old one is that the old one has a USB plug. So that would allow you to attach a Wi-Fi dongle and connect your Lego Mindstorms hub to Wi-Fi. However, the new one does not. So you're limited to using cables and or Bluetooth. However, one solution to providing Wi-Fi to your hub is the ESP32 board. So I'm just gonna walk through getting an ESP2 board up and running and set up with your computer so that you can write some code. I'm gonna write it using Python and then publish your code to your board and see its effects. So the ESP230 board, the ESP32 board that I purchased was one from a content creator called Anton's Mindstorms. And this board has been slightly adjusted to work a little more seamless with the Lego Mindstorms. So as you can see, it's got a couple extra plugs just to make it easier to connect. Now, one thing it doesn't have is an onboard LED. So we will have to add um, a small circuit to get an LED just to see if our code is working. So the first step to connecting your board is to download the appropriate driver. So the driver that I need for my board is this one here. So I'm going to download that, which I have already done. And let's walk through the installation process. Now I have already installed this driver once, but let's walk through the process anyway. Now the first time I installed this driver, I had to adjust a security setting in my system preferences. So if you run into that issue, just open up your system preferences, go to security and privacy, and you will see a message right here that the recently installed driver is attempting to do something that it cannot, and you just need to grant those permissions. So you would just click the lock, to unlock your settings, click allow, and then the driver will proceed. As this is the second time that I've gone through this process, it is not going to ask me. All right, the driver is installed, so I can close that, and I no longer need that file. All right, next there, I found two methods. I tried a lot of methods, probably six or seven by the time I was done. And I found two that were the most reliable. I tried a handful of Visual, Visual Studio Code plugins, but I didn't have a lot of luck. The, um, the simplest one was to use an IDE for Python called Thani. So from here, you can download your appropriate version. and install this. Okay, then we can delete all these files. Open up Thani. and you can write some simple code here. Now notice at this point, I do not have the option to run any code and that is because it has not yet detected my board. So I'm going to just connect my board here You see the light on to confirm that it's connected. Okay, and now if I click stop, you can see I now have a play button so I can write some code and test it. Now, before I do that, if you click on the main menu, go to Thani and then preferences, here you can actually see your board. So if I click on interpreter, I'm gonna choose MicroPython ESP32. And then from here, I can choose the port that my board is on. Now, trying to detect the port automatically is probably fine, but this is my port here. So I'm gonna choose that one 
and hit OK. Now, if, you, if you're not sure which port your board is on, one way to do it is to open up your terminal and just go list slash dev slash tty dot star. And this is going to list every USB connected device. So here I can take a look and see that I'm not sure what that one is. That is the Lego hub. Uh, this is my headphones. There's a second one there for my headphones. This one, I'm not sure. So I can assume that that is my board. If you've got more and you can't figure out which one it is, you can actually just disconnect your board, rerun that command, and notice the, the USB serial 14210 is now gone. So I can safely assume that that is my board. I now see that it's back. So I can safely assume that that is my ESP32 board. Now from here, if I just want to write a little bit of Python, I can just, for example, just write print hello world and hit enter and it responds and that's working. So let's confirm that this is working by adding an LED. Now I don't have an onboard LED on my board, so I'm just gonna quickly connect this to a small circuit here, uh, just with a basic LED. So for this one, I'm just gonna connect the ground to one end and port 22 to the other end. All right, so from here, I can write a small program to flash that LED. So I'm just gonna import time and import the pin. Okay, then I'm going to create a variable. I'll just call it LED and I'm gonna use pin 22. On the board, it actually says 1022, but it's just the last two digits. Okay, then I'm going to create an indefinite loop here and I'm going to take the LED and change the value to one. I'm going to wait for one second, then turn it off. And then wait another second. And just so I can confirm that this is actually working, I'm just going to run a print command. Otherwise, if it's not working for some reason, I may or may not know. Okay, so there's my program. I'll just put that on my desktop. And let's run that. Okay, so it uploaded. I can see that my print is being initiated about every second. And if I look at my board, it's kind of hard to see, but right here, we've got a flashing light. So that confirms that I am successfully able to create a program and upload it to my ESP32 board. So that is how you would achieve that using Thonny. In another video, I'm just going to walk through how to do it kind of a little bit more manually, just using uh, Visual Studio Code to write my program, and then using a little tool called Ampy to upload and initiate my code.